Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we're using the Akiza playmat because we love Akiza. But we're going to be profiling a deck that I've been wanting to profile for you guys for some time. And that is my Earthbound Immortal deck. Now, I actually have been wanting Earthbound Immortal support for some time. Uh, I've done top 5 videos on it on the channel talking about how badly I want this and I am so grateful that Konami finally gave us support this past year. Now, currently, if you're playing this deck before April 2020, before the uh, Master Rule revision, or Master Rule 5, or 4.5, or if you want to call it a revision, annotation, whatever, if you're playing this before, this deck will still function as is. It will do good. But... I've been practicing for the last week and a half, ever since that became announced, um, online and in real life, once we're a couple times with some buddies of mine over the holidays a couple weeks ago, with this deck, seeing how it would function under the, the new rules. And I'm going to say this deck gets a boost um, because Synchro plays. You don't have to just go for one Sun Dragon and then have to wait for it to die and then go for Moon Dragon. No, you can get off your Synchro plays a lot quicker, which is really, really nice. So this deck is going to get a little power boost when that happens. But without further ado, let us get into the deck profile, guys. I just wanted to mention that before I got into the video. So first off, we run one Earthbound Immortal, uh, Kappa, I'm not going to pronounce these, the Alien One, the Giant. One Whale, one Asela Pisku, and one Earthbound Immortal Yura. I know I probably butchered their names. Asela Pisku I can say, but I can't say this thing. Akapa Aku. You guys can you guys can correct me down in the comment section if you like. Uh, Chaka Chalu I can pronounce, but these these names are so fun to pronounce. And I love that what they did is they incorporated this deck with the Sun and Moon Dragon of, if you guys know your history, the Incan lore, it's so cool that they, they combined both of them. I, I'm so, I like the way they did this deck and what they were thinking ahead. Uh, now, I'm going to be honest with you, you can run pretty much any Earth on a mold as you want. The main reason people run, if you guys are wondering why you see people run two of the Giant and one of the Spider, or two of the three of the giant and one of the spider, or two and two, is because of the OTK. Um, there's a OTK, quote unquote, or an FTK, um, that you can technically get off, you know, by using Earthbound Linewalker, dropping their life points to three thousand, and then hitting them with this, and then that's that's game. And I'm going to be honest from playtesting, even under the new master rules. That doesn't happen quite often as you would think. It doesn't. Uh, maybe you're having better luck than I do, but I've tried it, and I've had friends try this deck, and they're just like, it doesn't work. It's kind of pointless. So what I have found is I'm just running some of the better Earthbound Immortals. I find that if you're going to run Earthbound Immortals in the deck, you need to run no more than four. Um, three to four is optional. I would say, um, due to the fact that you have multiple different ways that you're going to get this bad boy, these guys out. It's a lot easier to get them out now, actually, with the way the deck functions. So I like uh, four of them. Um, these are just some of my favorite ones that work well. Asela Pisku is pretty nice. Your is kind of like a brain control. This does a thousand damage. It's a big boy. It's nice. You can run any ones you want, like the Lizard, if you can get the effect off or whatnot. And then the big one, too, the Big Daddy, who does stuff. So, yeah, these are just some of my favorites, which I have all in Ulti Rare, which I've had. I have the entire set of them in Ulti. I've had them since I was a... for a while now, actually. I've been playing, if you guys don't know, on this channel, if you're new to the channel, I built this Earthbound Immortal deck initially before the new support approximately two and a half years ago. And I profiled it every year. I kept updating it, and finally we got new support. So it's so fun to play with some better cards. So Earthbound Line Walker, like I said, if you're trying to make an OTK variation, run the ratios I was talking about earlier, because this will help you your OTK enabler. This guy gets easier to special summon out with the new Master Rule revisions, uh, because you can have a Synchro Engrave easily. And then you can have a Synchro on the field. And then you can Special Summon him out and then do your plays. He becomes easier, but it still takes setup and takes time to set up um, for that reason. But overall, 
he's still a great card in the deck, I would say. Definitely a nice card to have. And you run him as a 3 of still, because he's essential to your different plays in the deck. Um, next we run, i got to read this, Supe Duskwalker. We run 3 of her, which, oh my gosh, I love the artwork of Supe and of, what's the other one called? Ascent, Ascenter, Do, excuse me, Dawn Walker. So Duskwalker and Dawn Walker, I call them. Uh, they are really helpful for the deck. Um, these guys are pretty much one card synchros into Sun Dragon Intei and Moon Dragon Quiloff. That's what these guys do. So, this works with the Ant to help bring out Sun Dragon, and this Duskwalker works with uh, the Fate, the Mask, I call it, to go into Quiloff. That's how this works. These cards are one cards. Pretty much, well, I mean, it, they're a single card to help go into these guys. That's what they do. And they're really nice to run in the deck. Like, they're really useful, and they just become better as time goes on. They're just, they're just pretty good cards. And last time I checked, these cards are pretty cheap out of the set. So this deck, for the most part, is pretty cheap to build. Um, if you guys were interested in playing it, from my aspect, I just high rarity bumped it because I had all, a lot of the cards already. So first we run two Supe and two uh, Fire Ant Ascator. Um, you don't run more than two of each. I've seen people run three and three, and I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> like, the Ant's okay to run at three of. Supe, you don't want to run at three of. He's okay. But mainly the way you want to bring these guys out, like I said earlier, is through your Dawn Walker and through your, um, uh, excuse me, Dusk Walker. Because this helps this, and this works with this. And that's how they work. So that's why I like running those ratios of those cards. Um, but like I said, again, you can run different ratios, but I just like two and two. And I do, I do, if I draw them, they're kind of dead, but I, then I usually discard it to get the effects off of the Dusk Walker or the Sun Walker or whatever the case may be. Or I can use Plague Spreader and then go off of that. Because I do run Plague Spreader in the deck, which I kind of like as a cool little tech. Uh, next, I want one Oracle of the Sun. Uh, some people run two of this, three of it I've seen. Um, me, personally, it's a cool card. It's kind of like a Cyber Dragon-esque card. Um, and it's just nice to have, but it's not essential to the deck because we have other cards now. But I do still like it in the deck as a one-of in the deck. And so I just run one Oracle of the Sun. This is an older card that came out initially with all the Sun and Moon Dragon stuff. Uh, next we run this engine in the deck, which is three Malicious um, and one Plague Spreader. So this is, yeah, you're kind of going with those old school plays, which is kind of cool. Remember back in the day with Teladad guys, you used to use Malicious and Plague Spreader to go into Stardust and Thought Ruler Archfiend and all those level eight plays and go your Guardian even sometimes um, if you were running like the Psychic Commanders and whatnot. But beside the point, this here helps go for more Synchro plays which helps set up your um, big guy over here, which we were talking about earlier, Earthbound Line Walker. It helps with this. In addition, this also can be used to help go for link plays, which is nice. Now, some people run multiple plague spreaders, and I understand that. But me, I found that multiple plague spreaders got kind of bricky, so I just like one plague spreader in the deck. That's all. Um, you have Foolish if you need to send something to Graveyard. Um, maybe you want to send a Mallet to Graveyard because you haven't drawn it. Uh, maybe you want to send a Plague to Graveyard because you haven't drawn it. That's fine. And the cool thing is, say you draw one of these. Well, the cool thing is also to activate Duskwalker and to activate Dawnwalker, you have to discard a card. So what optimal card would you like to have in Grave? A Mallet or a Plague Splitter. So it works out pretty well. Um, that's what I like about these cards here. They're just nice to have in the deck for extending plays, for doing synchro plays to help this out. Overall, I just like this little package in the deck. Um, but yeah, you can. it's really fun to play around with, and I do like it. I was trying different ratios out, but that's what I came up with at the end of the day. Next, I run three Earthbound Ge excuse me, double Earthbound Geogriff, which is a new card that came out recently. A uh, pretty decent card to have in the deck. And then I also run two Mausoleum of the Emperor. Now you may be asking, where is Mound of the Bound Creator? And if you guys have been on my channel before or have seen me profile this deck in the past, I have run you know, Mound of the Bound Creator in the deck because it helps protect your big boys. 
and that's cool and all, but it doesn't do enough. I want more consistency in the deck. After playing this deck for enough times, I want consistency over protection, all right? Um, that's what I value. Um, you want to be able to get your monsters out in the field. I don't care, you know, I don't care about protecting them as much. I mean, it's cool to protect them, but if I can't even get them on the field, what's the use of protection? I hope that makes sense. And that's why I found that I like this ratio of four field spells. Some people run five by running a Mound of the Bound or a second Geoglyph or a second Mausoleum. This is just what I like to run, and it works well for me. Uh, so this is the ratio I'm running of the field spells in the deck, and it's been working out pretty well. Do love the artwork on Geoglyph, though. Um, next we run one Terraforming. Uh, which I was talking about earlier because you run field spells. We also run things like you see uh, set rotation and metaverse as well because field spells are still integral to the deck, especially for your Earthbound Immortals. Uh, some people have said run Seal the Oil Calcos because they can't destroy it and run this and that. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but yeah, it's cool, but it doesn't help. <laughs> There's other better cards out there. Um, next, we run two Fire of Doomsday. Um, this card's really cool uh, for the different things you can do. So you can use it for link plays. That's cute. Uh, but mainly what you're going to do is it's because it's a quick play spell. So you can't do anything else pretty much the turn you set this. The way you're going to use this is kind of the same way you use Scapegoat, which is kind of neat. So what you do is you'll set this card. Then on your opponent's turn, in end of your opponent's turn, you'll activate it. You'll get your two tokens out on the field, which... I actually have these tokens, so we're going to use these, the Earthbound Immortal tokens. Uh, you're going to bring out your two tokens, and then you'll tribute your two tokens for an Earthbound Immortal. Or you can go for a Link Play if you wish, because the restriction only applies for that turn. So you're going to activate it at the end of your opponent's turn. That's how that works, and I really like it. It's really neat. Um, I like Fires of Doomsday in the deck as a 2 of. Some people like it as a 3 of, but it gets way too cloggy. I just like it as a 2 of. Works well for me. Uh, three, Call by the Grave, because you do not want your Sun Dragon or Moon Dragon, something to happen to it. You don't want anything to get negated in this deck. So, three, Call by the Grave, you run. <laughs> uh, next up, I run one Earthbound Immortal, uh, Revival. This card helps you get back a field spell on Earthbound Immortal. It's a good one of in the deck. It's kind of like, um, if you guys are familiar with Gravekeepers, Gravekeeper Stele. And how that helps you, you know, add two gravekeepers back from your graveyard. This came out around the same time, but works for Earthbound Immortals with a field spell and an Earthbound Immortal. So, yeah, it's just a nice little one of the run in the deck. Uh, one, for your one of you run one set rotation. This works with your field spells. You're running a field spell deck. Um, that's, you know, it's integral to the deck. One foolish burial. This works if... If you need to send something to the graveyard to set up plays, your Plague Spreader, your Malicious, yes, you can discard them for hand, but sometimes you want to discard them from the deck to get them, the engine going, if you understand. Uh, one Upstart Goblin, a little bit of draw power, never hurt anybody. One Monster Reborn, Reborning cards is nice. And that's all for your uh, spell cards. Uh, on to the traps. We run a couple. We run one Metaverse because we are a field spell oriented deck. Yes, it is a little bit slow because it's a trap, but it's still neat, nice to have and is necessary in the deck. So yeah, one Metaverse. Uh, and then also I run two Earthbound Wave. This um, is a really cool card in the deck. I like it. It's kind of like a solemn judgment card. And it's one of the reasons why I prefer um, this card over other cards because it can also be a thing where it can help protect um, my field spells. It can also help protect my monsters from certain things, especially my Earthbound Immortals once I get them on the field after, you know, using resources. So I like this card a little bit better. Um, it is a two of, and it is nice to have um, in the deck, and I do like it. But you can run one or none or two of. It's up to you. I've seen people run different ratio of this card. I've always liked it as a two of in the deck. Especially with the ease, you can get Earthbound Immortals out in this deck to some degree. Um, on to the extra deck. Next we run two Sun Dragon. And we also run two Moon Dragon. Um, you want to run two, you know, two of each just in case something gets called by the Graved. Because then you're going to be crying a river because you didn't run another one just in case something should happen. Um, so yeah, you run two of each. Like, you must. <laughs> uh, one Bryonic, take me supersonic. Uh, one Black Rose Dragon. Yes, that's an ultimate rare Black Rose Dragon I've had since it came out in Crossroads of Chaos. 
I love this card. Love Akiza. Uh, one Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. One Scarlight Dragon Archfiend. One Beelzebub. Uh, excuse me, I mean Beelz. Uh, yeah, we run BLs. He's nice. Uh, we also run one Void Ogre Dragon, which is nice to have. Void Ogre Dragon. For your links, we run a couple. We run We Witch's Apprentice, which I'm sorry if you can't see that, but that's We Witch. We run Cyframe Lord Lambda, Lambda which is nice to have. Uh, Underclock Taker can help you OTK with some of your Earthbound Immortals, which is cute. Uh, one Bowl Sword Dragon up here. Uh, and then we also run. You know, what I consider a token or a field spell, Yugi and from the Duel Links thing. And then I also run two of my tokens, which I use for my Fire Doomsdays, which this was used for the trap for Earthbound Immortals, but I've had the, these for years. Picked them out of a commons box probably three years ago, but yeah, these are just what I use for tokens, the Earthbound Immortal tokens. So those are my tokens I run in the deck, which is kind of cool to use them again. Um, but yeah, that's the deck, guys, in a nutshell, and I hope you guys all enjoy this deck profile. This deck is super fun to play. Like, is it meta? No. Am I excited to play this deck with the new-esque, um, support? Uh, yeah, like, when we get the revision to Master World 4, this deck is going to be, you know, really, really fun to play, guys. Like... You have no idea how fun, I, how much I'm waiting for that to happen with certain decks out there, because they'll get a little bit of a power boost, and I mean a little bit, but they'll be a little bit more easier to play and funner to play. But I hope you guys all enjoyed this deck profile. If you did, please leave a thumbs up down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and bell the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this deck profile. And good luck dueling to all of you guys out there. Take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling to all of you, and I'll see you guys next time. Seto Kaiba, out.